Hi friends, welcome to Arc Tutorials. This is top 20 web developer interview questions and answers. These are the questions that you are expected to know for any developer role that you're applying. These are the common, most asked and frequently, um, I would say, checked when you are attending any interview. So make sure that you get these 20 questions absolutely right. So the first question is, what is doc type in HTML? So doc type tells the browser which version of HTML standard is used and how to render the page. So doc type is an essential and very important uh, element in a HTML page which tells what kind of the data or what how to process and render this particular page in the browser. Doc type ensures that the browser makes the best effort attempt at following the relevant spec specifications rather than using a different rendering mode that is incompatible with some specifications. What are data attributes? Data attributes are used to store custom data directly inside HTML pages. The data attributes, just like any other HTML attributes, can be easily accessed via CSS and JavaScript. Some of the commonly used examples of data attributes are data-dismiss, data-target, data-toggle, etc. If you look at the most modern frameworks that you'll work with, like Bootstrap, Material Design, they all make heavy use of data attributes. If you want to check more examples, go ahead, open Bootstrap uh, framework, any component, and you would see data attributes attached to that components. Now, what is SVG? SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. Now, it is nothing but it is used for displaying the vector graphics on the page. The most important thing about SVG is the image does not lose its quality when we zoom in or zoom out. And that's one of the reasons that most of these responsive images are now moving to SVG. We can also easily customize the SVG like color, size, background, etc. If you look at the Bootstrap 5 icons, they are all completely redesigned with SVGs. So give this example when you are asked about SVG in your interviews. Now this is yet another important question often asked in CSS. What is the difference between display none and visibility hidden? Whenever we try to use display none, the element will not be displayed in the page at all. Also important thing to note is that the element will not occupy any space on the web page. So which means whenever you use display none, the element is not displayed. Along with that, the element will not occupy any space in the web page. Now, talking about visibility hidden, the element will not be displayed in the page. Also, at the same time, remember that the element will still occupy the space in the page. Now, this is the major difference, guys. Both the attributes will help to hide the element, but when you use display none, the space will not be occupied by the element. Whereas when we use visibility hidden, this the element continues to occupy the space. The next important question that is often asked is, what is the difference between session storage and local storage? So session storage is available when a browser's tab or window is open. Right. So, for example, when you open a browser window, you will store some kind of a tokens or say um, some features or modules, etc. Those details are captured in the browser only for that particular session, which means when you close the browser, the details are gone. It will not be retained. Whereas local storage is available even after closing and opening the browser window which means the data will be retained into in your browser storage. And that's a very, very difference because whenever you're working with sessions or critical data, it, you need to only store them in session storage because you want them to be valid only for that particular session. But whenever we talk about local storage, you want to continue holding some kind of a data, 
right and that's where local storage will come into handy all right this is yet another question that is often asked for junior or mid level developers on html5 which is name some of the few new features or tags that were introduced in html5 so some of the tags that were introduced in html5 are header nav section footer aside article video audio all of those were introduced as part of html5 in html5 they also there are also some new form controls that we can use some of them being email url date calendar etc so whenever you talk about html5 talk about this semantic also called as semantic web elements and the form controls what is a css preprocessor now css process preprocessor is a tool which allows us to create css code much faster in a more structured manner css preprocessor extends css by allowing us to add variables mixing partials etc this way it becomes very powerful and helpful when you are working on creating your own custom theming and also in creating reusable code to give an example take an example of bootstrap so we have something called we there we use css sas and we'll define primary color right for example so if you want to change that you have to change only in one place rest all everywhere it will automatically update the same variable right so whenever this question comes up with respect to css preprocessor talk about giving a real time example now what is the difference between ul and ol tags this is very very basic and they expect you to know this because if you are a junior developer or full stack developer this is a very very basic thing that every developer should know ul stands for unordered list right and by default when you use a element list with unordered list it will have a bullet list now ol stands for ordered list it's the behavior is same except that now the list will be numbered list it's an in order and by default the number is its numbered list the ordering is number list so this is yet another question that is often asked to see if you have really used uh, the different uh, table attributes right so they will ask you what are the tags that you have used with table right now some of the uh, tags that you have you should mention are table which is used to define the table in html t head which is for the represents the table header which is used by th tag inside it then you define rows table rows using tr then we define using the td which is for defining a column in the table and finally we can also use t foot which is used to define the table footer right so mention these tags whenever you are talking about table out what are the tags used in tables now the next question is what is the difference between equal to equal to and triple equal to in javascript also known as equality check and strict type check so double equal to means it's an equal equality check operator check if the values are matching on the both comparisons right and triple equal to stands for strict type checking as well as equality check which means check both the value as well as the data type of the comparing elements so if you are writing this this can be tricky because whenever we want to have a strict data type checking we will use triple equal to but if you are using just checking value you can use double equal to so that is the thing that you should explain when you are asked about this particular question now what are the different types of it's not loose it's loops <laughs> all right so different types of loops that are available in javascript are for loop while loop for in and do while for loop uh, goes through a code x number of times in a repetition mode till a certain condition is achieved whereas for in loop will go through loop in through the object for properties 
while loop will goes through the inner code when a specified condition is true do while will go through the inner code while a condition is true similarly but we know that do while will go at least once okay so that's the main uh, important difference between while and do while all right now this is yet another important question often asked uh, whenever you are attending any javascript interview which is explain the difference between let const var in javascript we know that these are used for defining the variables the difference lies in how they behave right so whenever we say var it means the variable can be redefined can be reassigned and has global scope but whenever we talk about let then it means we can reassign the value but we cannot redeclare redefine the variable right so that's the important difference remember we can reassign the value but we cannot redeclare or redefine it const on the other hand can not be redefined and cannot be reassigned right so remember this is an extremely important um, question that is often asked make sure you that you get this extremely correctly the next question is what is an arrow function in javascript an arrow function is an expression is a, nothing but it's a compact alternative to a traditional function right so instead of writing the entire function we use shorthand which is using arrow right like for example if you see here now we are writing function a comma b right here we are writing function keyword followed by parameters a comma b but when you are doing the same with arrow function you don't have to write the keyword function you can just write arrow function and do what it is supposed to do it makes it easy because the code is much simpler cleaner and easy talking on the same lines now they can also ask you what is the difference between arrow function and a function in javascript an arrow function expression is a compact alternative to a traditional function expression arrow function has some limitations over traditional functions for example we cannot use this operator inside the arrow function right because um, see it does not have a scoping right arrow function does not have a scoping that's why we cannot apply things like apply call or bind right so these are some of the restrictions that you should talk about when you are talking about difference between arrow function and a normal function in javascript all right so now the next question is what is u strict in javascript right so the u strict directive was new in ecmascript version 5 right so it is not a statement but a literal expression right ignored by earlier versions of javascript the purpose of u script is to indicate that the code should be executed in a strict mode right what do we mean by strict mode strict mode means it will compare and check that everything should be matching right for example if you are not declaring something it will give you error if you are redeclaring something it will give error if you are not properly scoping things it will give you errors so that means that it it's basically a strict mode which means that it will have to adhere to all the proper naming convention and the behavior of it and that is that is what makes u strict um, actually popular because it makes sure that you don't have errors or commonly warnings or mistakes in your code and if you look at uh, the u strict it means all modern browsers right if you look at ie9 and below it will not be supported but anything above ie9 should be easily supported and that's why we always prefer to use strict now what is metadata in html right now this is yet another question that is oftenly asked um, for developers to see their understanding because you don't have to write your code you have to write your code in a way that it is properly um, seo enabled and can be used for marketing right so all of that makes it really uh, a tricky thing so that's why it's important to know about metadata now what is metadata 
it's a set of additional HTML tags for specifying additional information about the web page. The metadata is very helpful and critical for SEO optimization. Now some of the metadata tags that you will find in HTML pages are name, author, keywords, URL, etc. Using these, the search engines will know what kind of content is there in the web page and hence they are extremely important for implementation, especially from SEO perspective. The next question is, what is Canvas in HTML? Now this is a new HTML5 edition through which using Canvas, we ca it's an easy and powerful way to draw diagrams in HTML. This is used for drawing graphics, photo compositions, create animations, etc. You, we use JavaScript for drawing on the canvas, right? So it's nothing but SVG. We use canvas and use JavaScript for modifying and updating the images. Now, the next question, very important one is, what is a web worker? Web worker is a piece of JavaScript code that runs in the background. We will have a lot of tasks which needs to be run in the background and not necessarily let the user know about them, right? So that means the, the web workers are a simple means for web content to run scripts in the background threads. The web worker can perform tasks without interfering with the user interface. In addition, they can perform the IO using AJAX or XML HTTP request objects. Once created, a worker can send messages to the JavaScript code that created it by posting messages to an event handler, right? So think of it this way that there is a continuous listener in the background which does the background checks and also some of the operations like syncing into various content or updating devices or pulling the latest data. So basically it allows our application to work in offline kind of a mode using the web worker. What are block and inline elements in HTML5? A block level element is drawn as a block, right? That's the main difference between block and inline. A block element will always be used as a block and it will always occupy 100% of the screen width. Remember that. Whenever we say block element, it will occupy 100% width on the screen. Whereas whenever we say inline, it means it will only occupy the space that is needed by that particular element, right? So for example, if you have an image, if it's only occupying 20% of the width, your inline element will occupy only 20% of the width. However, whenever we say it has a block element, it will irrespective of the size of the content, it will occupy 100% of the width. Examples of block level are div, paragraph, which are used by default as a block because they occupy 100% of the width of the screen. Alrighty, that brings us to the end of this where we are we have covered top 20 um, web developer interview question answers. If you like the video, give a thumbs up to this video. Do comment, like, share and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you are enjoying this particular series, do let me know. I will compile more interview top questions for you so that you can prepare for your dream job. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you in the next episode.